So some of you guys actually submitted some questions, so I'm going to read a couple of them for you guys over here. Uh, this is from uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie Kimmel. Uh, when weighing whether or not to initially join the X-Men franchise, did you consider how this could define you and thus pigeonhole you as an actor? I mean, you were coming from two different places in your careers, but Patrick, where were you, were you at? In, in, in one respect, yes. I met with Brian Singer, who directed the first two movies, and um, he pitched the idea to me. And I was flattered because I admired his work very, very much and wanted to work with him. But I said, you know, it's not very long since I finished work on another franchise, although at that time we had no idea that this would be a 17-year process. And it's all been marvelous, but there is also a downside to becoming so identified with one character. A director had just said to me, I love your work, you're terrific, but why would I want Jean-Luc Picard in my movie? Mm. Well, that was discouraging. And I explained this to Brian and said, so I'm going to say thank you, but it's a pass. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I, I, um, we, he, he seemed to accept it, and the, our luncheon went on, and then he said, listen, let me just tell you how I feel about this movie. And by the time we got to coffee, I was sold and never regretted it for a moment because it wasn't anything like Star Trek The Next Generation. Right. And, but like Star Trek, it was from the very beginning about something. As Hugh has mentioned several times in the past few weeks, the opening scene of the first movie is set at the gates of a concentration, of a Nazi concentration camp. Th this is not the opening of a classic superhero right. movie. Mm -hmm. And that has been the tone of movie after movie, including the Wolverine series. They've been about something. And, and for, for you, Hugh, I mean, I know you were, I mean, this was the opportunity of a lifetime, it yep. seems, uh, for you. I know there was, uh, your wife at the time had some maybe trepidation about it. Yeah, she said no. <laughs> she said, what do you, I mean, I ran the scene with her before reading and she got two claws come out of your hand. She's like, Hugh, this is ridiculous. You can, you, you're at the Royal National Theatre with Sir Trevor Nunn. You can't be having claws coming out of your hands. I said, well, I'm going to give it a go. And she says, you're on your own. So uh, the only time she's ever been right. wrong in 21 years of marriage. But uh, it was my first film. Honestly, when I was at drama school, my heroes were Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Judy Dench, David Suchet, Alan Howard, all these people from these famous tapes, the John Barton How to Play Shakespeare tapes, which are literally the Bible of how to act in some of the most difficult material. So I had dreamt one day of being on a in a stage production with this guy. And so the moment I knew that Patrick was in, I said, Dave, I don't know, I think there's more to this. I'd never heard of the comic book, by the way. Right. Uh, me but, too. <laughs> <laughs> little did I know that I was walking into probably, I mean, one of the best characters, I don't know, but uh, right. in, in comic book history. You know, to, uh, a character who's, yes, tough and badass and, you know, chomps a cigar and, you know, takes out 20 people like that, but he's also complex and so, yeah. yeah. But I probably would have done the catering on that film. Don't <laughs> tell anyone, but I probably would have done anything. Um, we also, uh, you know, in, in asking social media for all these great questions, we actually got one really cool video question. Would you mind me showing you a little video question? Yeah. Okay. This is a super fan, I'm told. Let's take a look. At the, you, re <laughs> you recognize this guy? <laughs> yes, I do. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Jackman, big fan. Um, my question is, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, you had thought at all about developing uh, anything for the Victor Creed Sabretooth character, which is, you know, really loved the, uh, the origin no, picture like and uh, thought that that character warranted maybe a, an old man Creed thing or something. Anyways, love all your stuff. Really looking forward to Logan, and uh, thanks very much. That was the amazing uh, Liev Schreiber, who played uh, Victor Creed, Sabretooth, in yeah. X-Men Origins uh, Wolverine, uh, yeah. asking for old man Creed. Where's old man Sabretooth? By the way, it was discussed, James and I. I mean, for my money, I thought he was probably the best thing in that movie. Uh, of course, there was another little small part played by Ryan Reynolds, a little Deadpool. Heard a little moment. bit about that, He was yeah. pretty awesome, but I thought Liev was amazing. And, and all jokes aside, Liev was talking to me off camera about the possibility of what could be done with a Wolverine film that we've done in this film. He was like, I think this and that, and it was a very sort of interesting, different time. And, uh, that sort of was where it was starting to ruminate. 
So I have to thank him, but he was phenomenal. And we did, I've always loved that thing. I don't know if you guys know from the comic books, Wolverine gets one present every birthday because there's only one person on the planet who knows his birthday and that's his brother. And in the comic books, every birthday, there's a knock on the door or on his window, wherever he is, and it's his brother coming to beat the living crap out of him. And that's his birthday present every year. And I've always like, that is the coolest idea ever. <laughs> Anyway, it reminded me of those Peter Sellers films. Or, you know, the, he's man. Keto, yeah, Kato, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we couldn't quite work it. We're talking about you know the beginnings uh, of this of these playing these characters as well. Did you have a handle on these characters from the start? Did you feel like you knew your way into playing Charles right from the start and, and playing Logan Wolverine from the beginning? Not me. No, it was conversations with Brian Singer that really brought the character into a clear perspective, and. Uh, one of the things, of course, we discussed was um, I, I'm, I spend my, all my time in a wheelchair. Um, therefore, I am denied certain physical activities. And this was an action movie. And I wanted to do action. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, is there any chance I could get no? Well, what about if I no? Um, so I had to develop a character with uh, difficulties, but who was so active and energized and alive in other ways. And that meant up here, and that's what they wrote for me. So I was engaged right. pre preeminently with this rather than that. And, and for, for you, Hugh, I mean, yeah. I'm, I remember back back then, like the ideal like um, for the, fan, the fans was like Bob Hoskins was the one right. they always talked about. Really? So like you yeah. were kind of like a little bit against type in a weird way. Wow, great. Yeah, <laughs> that would have like, been awesome. But I mean, like they obviously embraced you very early on. Did you feel yeah. that they kind of like w welcomed you with open arms from the start? And did you also feel like you had a handle even in that first film on who this guy was? The comic book family, the fans? Yeah. Um, I, I was blissfully unaware. I'm sure if they knew a <laughs> six foot three Australian who'd just come off the stage doing a musical was playing Wolverine, they may not have been so um, happy about it. But um, I wasn't aware. I just dived in. I made, I made so many mistakes. I think it took me, first of all, I started studying wolves right. as my character. <laughs> This is how ignorant. I didn't know there was an animal called a wolverine. I thought it was comic book talk for wolves. Uh. And I started, t I literally went to the IMAX in Toronto and there was this documentary about wolves. And I'm like, this is awesome. They smell their eyes. Their noses are down. They're looking up through their eyebrows, but they're always smelling. And I knew Edison said, this is great. And I'm telling this to Brian Singer. And he's like, uh, you do know he's not a wolf. Really. And I said, well, yeah. And he goes, no, he's a wolverine. I said, well, that's not a real animal. He goes, yeah, it is. <laughs> the first three or four weeks for me, I think the turning point happened about three or four weeks in. It was a scene I had uh, with Patrick and with Howley and James. I, I just had a strong sense of just going off the script. I uh, started ad-libbing, calling him wheels. What do they call you, wheels? And this was just all ad-libbing. And I remember seeing Tom Siegel behind the camera. He called Cut, and he was just like, that's uh, about three or four weeks in when I started to feel it really come to life for yeah. me, you know.